All right, we have a uh, very special guest today and a topic that we're, is very, very important that people, I think, underestimate how important this particular topic, topic is. Uh, but this is actually going to be a part one of two series on sleep. We're going to follow this up with my friend, Dr. Mark Tall, on the next one. Uh, but for today, we have uh, we have Laurie Pinkerton joining us. And Laurie, I'm not going to slaughter your your bio, so I'm just going just to read it because it's, it's impressive. So uh, Laurie Pinkerton is a physician assistant who understands that true health comes from a consistent, positive lifestyle and food choices. In search of resolution to her own struggles with weight and fatigue, she embarked on a journey that led her to Idaho to learn about organic farming and integrative medicine. After graduating from a physician assistant program at Drexel University in Philadelphia, where did she do your undergrad? Uh, Fredericksburg at Mary Washington. Awesome. Uh, with a Master of Health Science degree, she returned to Idaho, where she practiced primary care and integrative medicine. It was not until she stumbled upon functional and metabolic medicine to treat chronic disease that she found her true home in the medical world. Laurie currently works as a physician assistant at the Car Carl Felt Center. Am I saying that right? Carl the Carl Felt Center, an integrative naturopathic health center located in Boise, Idaho. She's excited to offer holistic medical care to Idaho residents through a monthly subscription program. With a central focus for on optimizing metabolism, hormones, and health, she incorporates coaching with functional medicine and low-carbohydrate food choices to treat and reserve chronic disease such as diabetes, high blood pressure, and fatigue. Her number one goal is to help patients reach their health goals through education and empowerment. That's why you and I were drawn to each other. Uh, for those living outside of Idaho, she offers a health coaching program to help clients achieve their health goals to decrease fatigue and reach healthy weight. If you're interested in learning more about her services, you can visit the Carl Felt Center website, which I will link, and then or call 208-338-8902 to schedule a complimentary 15-minute discovery call with Laurie. Did we miss anything? I think that was great. I do also, um, I need a Gmail for people to contact me. Directly. Great. So let's give that, give that to me. We'll put it in. Uh, we'll probably have this published. In the next, well, it doesn't matter if people are sitting bits. Um, can be published this week. So sleep is what we're going to dive into. Um, highly, highly underappreciated, underutilized. Um, and from our standpoint, you know, when we have people on this, this weight loss program, um, they, when they hit plateaus, we'll ask two questions. Number one, how much water are you drinking? Number two, how's your sleep? So why is sleep so important? Well, before we enter that, I just want to say, just like eating, you know, it's something we do every day. I think it's important to note that sleeping is something that we do every day, and it's literally a daily opportunity for us to increase our health. Like, we have this opportunity, and so we should be maximizing it. In so many ways. Yeah. So, sleep. What is sleep? That was the first question. Great. Um sleep is a incredible active restorative process that the body goes through at night uh even though you look at rest and like there's not really much going on there's a lot um and we can dive into the sleep cycle in a little bit but um lots of healing and repair uh looking at bone growth muscle growth supporting the immune system blood glucose regulation brain health brain health yeah so there's actually like when you get into deep sleep, your body activates, activates these scavenger molecules inside of your brain that actually go through and clean up all the toxic things that get in there and, and just housekeeping for the brain. And the same thing happens to your cells. And there's so much we can talk about with autophagy. Um, you mentioned muscle growth, skeletal growth. I mean, it's just you don't sleep, you're not going to do well later. Yeah. Yeah. I'm silly. So let's dive into it. Yeah. Um, so sleep cycle. I'm going to cover that just briefly because I think it's important to have an understanding of what this looks like before we address what we can do, you know, to maximize our sleep and to make sure that we're actually getting restful sleep. So sleep is made up of several rounds of the sleep cycle. Also, this is from an article that I pulled from the Sleep Foundation. Um, it's called Stages of Sleep, and there's a really awesome video that I thought was fantastic. We'll link to that as well. Oh, awesome. So sleep cycle um, is made up of four individual stages. We have NREM, which is non 
uh, non-REM, and I'll talk about that in a moment, N1, N2, and N3, and then we have REM, which is rapid eye movement. So light sleep is that N1, N2, deep sleep is N3, which we're going to be talking about, and vivid dreaming is in that REM stage. So I would say, they said typically, but I'm guessing that's more like optimally, uh, people tend to go through four to six cycles, um, and not all the cycles are the same length. They average around 90 minutes. Some are longer, some are shorter. Um, N1 is the lowest REM. So this is uh, the easiest place to wake up. And that's kind of that transition in the dream world. Um, and if you're not disturbed, you can move quickly into N2. And so this stage is where your body starts changing. You're dropping in temperature. Muscles are getting relaxed. Uh, slow breathing and heart rate. And we're starting to see some changes in brain activity. Stage three is my favorite. Uh, and I don't know if I... And this is another reason why sleep is so important to me because I struggle with sleep, right? And fatigue and anxiety. And I know everyone who's listening, probably those words are not familiar to them. And so I think it's also important to address that as providers, we are also people and we go through, you know, difficulties. And so that's why sleep personally is so important to me because it affects everything in life. Um, so for deep sleep, this is where we start relaxing even further. We get decreased muscle tone, pulse, breathing rate, and our brain activity starts going into delta waves. And delta waves is where all the stuff happens. So we got delta sleep, also known as slow wave sleep. And this is where it's restorative. Um, we start processing memories and experiences, but we also, or and we also start releasing growth hormone. And we don't need to dive into growth hormone right now, but it's something that we're probably going to hit on. Uh, later into this. And that's where we start seeing the regeneration, the growth, um, and the immune system support. And then last stage is REM, rapid eye movement. And that's where our body starts picking up energy. Um, and that's where having our most vivid dreams. And this part is also very important for thinking memory cognition. So we go through multiple moments of that at night. Um, and, and those last two, I think, are just really important stages. And if we are not getting sleep, if we have insomnia, sleep interruptions from either two legged or four legged, you know, or, little, or three legged, if you have, you know, if you're a lover of tripod animals, <laughs> um, restless leg syndrome, anything that disrupts you from sleep, you're not able to get to those last two stages. Right. And that is where so much of this comes together. So that's why it's so important. And it's important to address in healthcare with our patients. Yeah. Still, the purpose of health care is for our bodies to heal. And if we're not going to get into that, if we're not going to get a good sleep, we're, just, we're not going to heal. Mm -hmm. uh, I love telling people, you know, when they come in for the first time and they're talking about our weight loss program, you know, one of the benefits of decreasing their overall inflammatory load is better sleep. And people like them fold it until they actually experience it. And all of a sudden they start sleeping better. And things just start taking off when that happens. Yeah. And I actually, uh, I, I witnessed that firsthand. So there's the whole serotonin, melatonin pathway. Um, there's a supplement 5-HTP. And I didn't know this, um, but I was like, oh, I'm having difficulty with sleep. I'm going to try this because it's been able to help. Um, I took it. I was up. I mean, like, I was so awake at 2 o'clock in the morning, but not awake at all. And I couldn't fall asleep. And I didn't realize that, oh, by the way, you have all of this inflammation, then you actually start pulling those building blocks toward an inflammatory pathway instead of making serotonin and melatonin. And so I, I mean, just, uh, it just goes on and on. I, and I know I said this to you before, but the more you learn about sleep, just the more incredible. That seems to be. So I, I didn't know that's, that's fascinating. So, yeah. you know, it, it, You've heard of the whole like pregnable and steel pathways, where it's like your body's body's under stress. Yeah, um, your body knows that it can live without sex, but it cannot live without cortisol. Yeah, so it pulls to sex hormones to create cortisol. What you're saying yeah. is those are the same inflammatory stress pathways are going to pull from being able to produce serotonin and to melatonin. Yeah, it oh. pulls. Yeah, it pulls that. It's, it starts with tryptophan, which is amino acid, 
essential, right? Was you get from food. So we have to get that first. And that's why protein is so important. Just, you know, side note. <laughs> um, tryptophan, and then it converts to 5-HTP, and then serotonin, melatonin. And so, yeah, if you're inflamed, it's pulling. And so not only were you not making melatonin before, but now you're just pulling with that inflammation. And also it kind of, that pathway itself, just links the importance between, I think, mood and sleep, because there's this direct conversion, my understanding, between serotonin and melatonin. Wow. I learned something. Not <laughs> every day. Awesome. So, so what, what do you tell your people? What's it like? Walk me through. If someone says, I'm not sleeping, where do you take it from there? Well, my first question is to ask about stressors mm -hmm. in their day. Um, ask about stressors, ask about what they're eating, ask about their activity, right? They're not having activity, they're not certainly not going to support the sleep cycle. Um, and then sleep hygiene. You know, what are we doing to turn off this fight or flight that we've been in all day mm -hmm. to get in line to this restful transition into sleep? Sweet. So with the time we have left, let's talk about let's talk about sleep hygiene. Yeah, um, I think that's important because there are some very very beneficial things that you can do. Um, so what's number one? So in the number one, I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna say this is number one just because it's something that's easy. You can put it on autopilot. I feel like it's a really low hanging fruit, um, but something that's very uh, easily missed. So making sure that the environment is well for sleeping, making sure that um, you know if you wake up and there's noise disturbances that you have a white noise machine, blackout curtains, making sure that the temperature is cool enough between 60 and 68 degrees. This isn't behavior change. This is something that we could just set, right? So that's that's why I'm saying it's some easy, uh, low-hanging fruit. Um, another one is definitely going to be screen use. Beep, 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 beep. So our favorite uh, decreasing screen use one to two hours before sleep because... There's a couple of different reasons that I've found that makes sense to me. If you're looking through Instagram or your email, you could be trying to settle down and then all of a sudden receive something that just gives you all this emotion. For, um, and then the other is the blue light, of course, right. which goes to the back of your eyes and tells a signal that, hey, it's daytime. Right. When and then, then you get a cortisol dump, mm -hmm. which means the whole 5-HTP pathway gets screwed up and you're not making sense. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Those are huge. Those are huge. So controlling your environment. Stay away from your screen. Uh, what are your thoughts on people actually taking melatonin? So I have not taken a super, super deep dive into that yet. Just hormones in general, when we're making hormones, we don't want to give too many exogenous hormones because we want to really support the body in making its own. And so I think that's important to address if you take melatonin at night especially like a slow release or something like that, it could be helpful in the beginning when we're trying to get you on the right path. But if that's what you're relying on, then we're missing the point. The whole point is to go through that pathway of getting a tryptophan, of the serotonin. So occasionally you just, uh, mm -hmm. not that big of a deal, right. All right. but if you're having to take the whole bottle for a week, and there's and something else is going, okay. Yeah. And, and if you don't address it, just like everything else, it's going to get worse. And the whole goal is to get it better. Because it's a domino effort. It's very... uh, I'll add a couple of things here. Sleep hygiene. Um, not having your father in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing that drives my teenagers nuts is I have all of our Wi-Fi uh, notes set on just cheap timers. And so I think about midnight, everything shuts off. There's no Wi-Fi in my house Damn. from like mid from like midnight till 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. Decrease that electromagnetic field in the house. Um, I find it helpful. Yeah. But the kids find it annoying. But, but you know, maybe they'll understand one day. They will. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and yeah, electronic. Um, uh, my husband actually said that. He's like, what about just entertainment? Like, starts with an E, entertainment. No TV. No electronic. Um, no, uh, because that's a long spree. Right, right. And the other thing that can be helpful on the flip side is... Uh, sleep meditations mm -hmm. or there's quite a few sleep podcasts out there actually which is interesting to me but the meditations i think can be helpful there's tons of stuff on um on iphone what i can't think of itunes mm -hmm. uh just they're free mm -hmm. sleep meditations youtube has free sleep meditations 
those can be very, very helpful. Um, mouth taping. Yep. Um, I, I, I love it. People think it's nuts. They're scared to do it, but it's very helpful. I would have to say the first time that I heard about it. So I, you know, we try things out on ourselves first to see how things go, whether it's supplements or, um, and so I, I heard about this, um, from the pulmonologist who's giving a lecture on, um, uh, there's a book that talks about, oh, I should have remembered what it was called, but um, basically when you breathe through your nose, it's completely different than through your mouth. And when you breathe through your mouth, you're breathing like chest breathing, but when you breathe through your nose, it's the whole lung. And also it helps release matrix oxide. So it's so parasympathetic state. Exactly. And, and so of course I tried this, right? And I, I wake up most mornings with a sore throat and I figured it was because I talk so much. But when I tape my mouth, I realized that it's because I'm breathing through my mouth because the next day I did not have a sore throat. And I thought that was also fascinating. <laughs> I've been doing it for years now. And I just, um, it's awesome. Yeah, it changes things. Yes, totally. Okay, so control your environment. Um, decrease your screen time, decrease entertainment. I, I, I did want to mention too, like I don't do digital books. Like we actually do paper books. Like, mm -hmm. For one thing, if I made a book that's on my shelf, you can't cancel that information. Right. right. It's, it's, you can't, or you have it. You have it. Um, the other thing is, even with Kindles, I think there's still some some blue light to watch my magnetic feedback that you're getting there that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, you can mouth tape, meditations. Other Am things. I missing anything? Else? Yeah, our own caffeine. So I want to talk about caffeine, coffee, other realms of caffeine. They can be great, you know, in a day to help boost your energy. But in the long term, they start stressing the adrenals and our other hormonal pathways. And that means that we're not able to produce hormones naturally, which is, again, like we talked about with melatonin, the whole goal. Um, so wanting to address that, not just making sure we don't drink it late at night, but just kind of questioning what, you know, is this serving me right. the way that I want it to? Um, and again, there are going to be days that you don't get any sleep for whatever reason. You could try your best, you know, and, and just go to sleep. Um, and, but you know that you did everything you could. Um, another thing is alcohol. So we sometimes relate alcohol to helping us drift and relax, but it fragments sleep. And so as we learned, if we're not getting into the full cycle of sleep, then it's not going to be that regenerative. And it's not, uh, it's all sleep, kind of like all supplements are not the same. All sleep is not the same. Or not. And you can't blanket it for everybody. So it is different. Mm -hmm. This is fascinating. Good stuff. <laughs> okay. So anything else we want to add before we? Um, let me see. Yes, actually. Um, I was really curious as to why sleep helps with the immune system. And I found something super cool and I wanted to share it. So this is coming from the Healthline, how sleep strengthens your immune system. You know, you ask Google how it strengthens it and it just gives you an article that answers it. Um, of course, not all articles are created the same either. Um, but this uh, was saying that sleep enhances the T cells, which is a white blood cell, it's adaptive immunity. It enhances the ability to adhere to um, cells that are infected by viruses or other pathogens or even just that are dysregulated. And so it does this through something called integrins. And so integrins are a class of adhesion molecules, um, also known as cell adhesion receptors, and they are essential for the cell matrix to adhere to another cell. And so for a T cell to attach to a cell and do its work, it has to attach with that matrix stress hormones like adrenaline uh, adrenaline and noradrenaline oh my goodness I said epinephrine and norepinephrine <laughs> and also pro-inflammatory molecules such as prostaglandins inhibit the stickiness whoa and so at night because our stress levels are lower those other hormonal levels are lower and that stickiness maximizes or increases Right. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's how it's able to connect. Certainly just one way the immune system is, uh, you know, <laughs> down. and this is just one method, you know, that I found for that, but I thought that was really interesting. Wow. Yeah. Two things that worked. Um, and then, uh, the only other thing I can think is sleep 
Supporting sleep supports growth hormone, and growth hormone can totally be a topic for another day. Absolutely. So, to be continued. To be continued. So, thank you very much for doing this for us. I'll put all your information will be in the in the, in the show notes, and we'll look forward to sharing more. Yeah. Thanks, Art. Oh, yes, thank you.